Hey folks, welcome to part seven of the Tableau Desktop Specialist Practice Exam Series. First question is gonna be, which method is recommended for sharing a dashboard with offline users? Keyword, offline users. Is it publishing to Tableau Server, sharing via Tableau Reader, emailing as a PDF, or embedding in a web page? Which of these is it gonna be? So, again, this is very straightforward, but when you're talking about offline users, and just kind of go down the list of options. So for example, publishing to, uh, to Tableau Server, does that help you get your content out to offline users? Obviously not, because if you're working with Tableau Server, you know whether it's the Tableau public server or a private Tableau server, you do have to be on the network, you do have to be online to be able to access that content. So that first solution, the first option is not gonna be correct. How about the second option, sharing via Tableau Reader? Well, what is Tableau Reader? Is that even actually a thing? It definitely is. So if you go to the Tableau documentation here, I'll link this down below, by the way. But um, yeah, you can open visualizations that are built in Tableau and really it's designed, it is a free tool, but it is uh, designed as a free desktop application that you can use to open and interact with visualizations built in Tableau and shared locally, right? Keyword locally. So that means you don't have to be online necessarily to be able to interact with the content. As long as a dashboard exists and you have access to it, like it's shared with you uh, as a file and you have Tableau Reader, you're able to interact with it. Um, and again, it's free. So, so far the second option looks correct. How about emailing as a PDF? On the surface, you might think, you know, PDF offline kind of makes sense, but if you're emailing something, you do have to be online, so that obviously can't be the correct solution. Final option is embedding in a web page. Again, you have to be online to be, uh, you know, able to access a web page to begin with. So you could embed, uh, you know, a dashboard into a web page, but at the end of the day, you do have to be online to have access to the web page. So the only viable solution here will be sharing via Tableau Reader. Now, if you do enjoy videos like this, consider liking the video and subscribing for more content just like this. Next question, what allows for the analysis of relationships between numerical values in Tableau? Is it going to be scatter plot, pie chart, bar chart, or line chart? Um, now, when you're talking about relationships between numerical values, what does that mean? So if you really want to compare the values, the numerical values, you know, take it as if you have two fields that are representing uh, numerical values. What what does that mean? You're working with measures, most likely continuous uh, measures, to be more exact. So, which of these uh, visualizations can really help you understand? Uh, you know, the dynamics between two values. So maybe you have something like sales and profit. Let's do an example in Tableau. Let's do it together. So um, what's the first option against scatter plot? So a scatter plot. What is a scatter plot? This over here is a scatter plot, right? And what it requires is zero or more dimensions and two or more measures. Now, because it doesn't require dimension, right? It says zero or more. That means you can just not have a dimension at all, but you do need two measures. That should indicate right away that, well, yeah, this is gonna allow me to compare uh, two, uh, two measures. So right now I have profit and sales selected. I click on a scatter plot and what does this tell me? This shows me the relationship between sales and profit. And right now we only have one mark because, well, we're not really dividing this or looking at any specific detail. But if I wanted to maybe see at a category level or let's say subcategory level, the relationship between profit and sales, I can drag that to detail over here and it's gonna do just that, right? Now I have uh, effectively a visualization that's showing me the relationship and then I can go crazy with some of these uh, trend lines if I wanted to, like an average line or, or what have you, um, for a little bit more insight. But long story short, yeah, I think, you know, scatter plot will fit the bill in terms of being able to allow you to show the relationship between two measures. What other options do we have? So pie chart. So let's scrap this. And what do we need for, our, uh, for a pie chart? Well, we can just do something like, uh, let's say, in terms of sales, I want to be able to, you know, build a pie chart based on sub or let's do category because it's it's more straightforward that way, right? So I have a dimension and I have a measure and I can click on this pie chart icon and now effectively I have what's known as parts of a whole. So you're not really comparing two measures, you're just comparing parts of a whole. So of my overall sales 
what is the distribution of sales among these different categories. So that's not gonna be the correct solution. Third option is bar chart. I can simply click on bar chart and right now it's broken out by you know categories and I, I kind of like the vertical bar so I'll go like this. But again, it's not helping you compare two measures, it's just helping you compare dimensions, right? Specifically the category dimension, how furniture stacks up against office supply. So that can't be the correct solution. Final option is line chart, which if you'll notice, typically you'd wanna use something um, like a date in, in most cases. So let's say we just wanted to see uh, the sales over a period of time. And now we have um, a line chart. Does that allow you to compare um, two numerical values? Not necessarily in Tableau. It's weird when you work with days because they could be discrete, they could be continuous, they could be considered a measure or a dimension. But if you look at the focus of a line chart, it's really to see the trend over time. It's not to compare two measures, so that can't be the correct solution either. The only solution here that is correct would be the scatter plot, as we just went over. Next question, which pane enables users to manage the layout and design of multiple dashboards in Tableau? Is it gonna be dashboard, layout, data, or story? Which of these panes, right? So let's go through these options. What is the dashboard pane? Is that does that even exist? Because I all I see is data and analytics. So if I open up a dashboard, because right now I'm looking at sheet 12, which is a which is a worksheet. Let's open up a new dashboard, and you'll notice you actually have a dashboard pane and you have a layout pane. So um, in terms of the dashboard pane, we have the ability to see this dashboard. Uh, through different devices, whether it's default phone, and I believe you have a number, you know, total four different options here, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So um, if you go over here, you have default desktop, tablet, and phone. Um, but then you can also adjust the size. Like if you want, you know, if you want the dimensions to be automatic, you could you could set it to automatic. Or if you want it to really kind of fixate on a particular dimension, you can do that here. You could type in your own kind of width and height, and it's really customizable that way. But does this, does this help you in terms of design, right? Uh, does it help you in terms of managing the layout and designing and in terms of designing multiple dashboards? No, it does not, right? Because all it's doing is really just uh, the dimensions, so to speak. So uh, what's the other option? Layout tab. Well, we have the layout tab here. What does this allow us to do, right? So uh, what's really neat about this, and you kind of have to use both tabs here, right? So let's say I have um, some containers in here, which you know I added through the dashboard tab. Um, and let me close out of this. So now that I'm in the layout tab and you know I added a bunch of containers here, I could actually see the item hierarchy on the layout tab, right? So, and I can, add in design elements as far as maybe I want to have a border, maybe just have a default background for, you know, the container that I'm selecting. And, you know, really you have a bunch of different options in terms of border, in terms of padding, there's an outer padding. So essentially everything outside this border would be the outer padding. Anything inside would be the inner padding. Um, and then you'd have the content after the inner padding. So a lot of design functionality here. So that definitely looks like um, the correct solution. Uh, what is the third option? Data. So where can I access the data pane? Well, again, we're going to go back to the worksheet here. That's where we have the data and uh, analytics pane. Does this help with design at all? It does not. It only has to do with calculated fields, parameters, basically all the components you would bring into a dashboard in terms of, you know, the, the data that's involved. So that's not gonna be the correct solution. Next option is story. Um, is there such thing as a story pane? Well, if you click on new story, there actually is, but all you can really do is add a new story point and you can add in uh, multiple worksheets or dashboards um, and maybe drag in text. And you have some of these other options in terms of like uh, size, like we saw on the dashboard tab. But in terms of like layout and things of that nature, not so much because at the end of the day, you can only bring in one thing at a time here, one story point at a time. It's not like you can really kind of align anything side by side. Like if I wanted to bring another sheet in here, it's just gonna replace it. So that's not gonna be the correct solution here. The only correct solution will be the layout tab because that does allow you to A, manage the layout and also uh, design multiple. So just going back here, right? back to uh, what, what I was saying about the layout tab. The other thing that you have here, right, this item hierarchy, the reason it's important and useful is because once you do bring in some other elements, 
Um, you know, you can rename this stuff to make it look a little bit more clear. Um, and if you, if I drag and drop something somewhere else, you'll, you'll kind of see like, you, you'll see a change down here. So it's very useful in terms of being able to visualize the layout of your containers, especially if you have a blank canvas like this, right? Just looking at this, it just looks like a white canvas. I don't know what's inside, but when I, when I look here, it really helps me understand what's, what's in there. So I uh, just wanted to add that as well. Next question, true or false, you can use Python scripts in Tableau calculations through the tab pi server, true or false? So uh, what is tab pi? Does that even exist? Is that even a thing? Uh, well, luckily there is. So we're gonna refer to the Tableau documentation for this. And as you can see, I'm actually looking at a GitHub repository for TabPy. So what is TabPy? It is the Tableau Python server, um, and it's an analytics extension implementation, which expands Tableau's capabilities by allowing users to execute Python scripts for some of you data scientists out there and saved functions via Tableau's table calculations. So how cool is that? Like you could maybe have reusable code within Python or maybe you wanna do something with data frames. You can actually access those from your calculated fields in Tableau as long as you integrate with the TabPy server. So again, this is gonna be true because yes, you can use Python scripts in Tableau through TabPy server. Next question, what is the main advantage of using context filters in Tableau? Is it to aggregate data for uh, faster processing, to filter data at the extract layer, to create dependent filters, or to create independent filters? Well, first and foremost, do, do context filters help you aggregate data in any shape or form. So first we have to understand what a context filter is. So again, let's reference the Tableau documentation. And again, I will link this down below. You see a bunch of different uh, you know, use cases for it, but here's why you might wanna create a context filter. To force a filter to be carried out first or to create a numerical or top end filter, right? So that's what you would use it for. But what exactly is a context filter, right? You'll notice in your filter pane as shown over here, you have the option with a lot of filters to right click and go to add to context. And that effectively turns it into like a dark uh, gray colored pill because that identifies it as a context filter. But in the grand scheme of things, what is it? What is the significance of context filters? And for this, you really have to understand the idea of the Tableau order of operations. So be sure to check out this chart um, to understand why it is so important. But basically, let me demonstrate real quick um, if I can. So let's say we have a simple sheet like this and we're gonna look at sales by, um, sum of sales by category and subcategory. So let's say we have a table and then let's say I wanted to create a rank here, right? So I'm gonna have a rank and it's gonna be ranked based on the sum of sales oops, sum of sales. So I, have a fun, so I have a field now called rank sales, and I wanna bring that here as well. So I see all my ranks, right? So what does this tell me? Under the category furniture, I have chairs, which is uh, rank one. And then under technology, I have phones, which is rank two. And again, this is based on the sum of sales. And let's say I wanted to create a top you know, top three, you just show me the top three uh, subcategories, right? So top three subcategories by the sum of sales, right? So I just wanna see my top three sales. So I'm gonna click okay. And now this is exactly what I would expect, right? So I have furniture as number one, technology as number two, and then office supplies as number three. And then let's say I wanted to show these filters as well for the category and also the, uh, the subcategory. And I have OCD, so I do want this to be a drop down menu. And I'm just gonna bring this to the top because it's the parent just to make it more uh, straightforward. But anyway, um, let's say I wanted to filter for just furniture and I wanna see the top, top three. It no longer works, I only have one. Why is that? Well, because on, on the underlying table, what Tableau first does is it identifies the rank and now that it has a list of, okay, furniture was number one, the third category was number two, the second category was number three, then it goes ahead and then filters this out. And as a result, 
those other two categories are no longer part of that list, so they get excluded. If I really wanted to get um, the top three uh, results based on my category, I would have to set this as context, as a context filter, because when I do that, think of it as if Tableau then creates um, a temporary table, right? It's, it's like on top of your underlying data, I now have a temporary table, and that temporary, temporary table is limited to just furniture, and then go in and then do the rank, right? So, and that's what this does, and that's why it's so powerful. So now this is able to work because we've added category as a context filter, it then goes in and then ranks it, right? So the, the ranking comes last, and now I can see as, you know, if I wanted to change between different categories, it'll update that accordingly. I'm not just limited to one option because it got filtered after the fact. So I hope that sheds some light on the importance and value and power of context filters. But going back to the question at hand here, um, does it aggregate data? No, it doesn't aggregate data at all. Does it filter data at the extract layer? It has nothing to do with the extract layer. It happens well after the fact, as you can see in the order of operations. Does it create dependent filters or independent filters? So again, let's just cover this real quick. So by default, all of these filters are independent, right? As we just witnessed. But if you introduce an, uh, a context filter like this, which is also an independent filter, so this category is an independent filter, but because I used a context filter, anything in addition to that, anything after that is gonna be dependent upon category, right? Like this subcategory, the set that we set here, everything that we added here, it's gonna be dependent upon this context filter. So by virtue and by nature of how it works, what is the main advantage of using context filters? They create dependent filters. So anything after that context filter is gonna be considered a dependent filter because it's dependent upon what that context filter is inclusive of. So. Hopefully that uh, you know makes it more clear. Quick pause. If you like these videos, but you're serious about acing the Tableau Desktop Specialist Practice Exam or Certification, I've got news for you. Check out the link in the description if you're interested in practicing with an even more realistic set of practice exam questions. There are at least five different practice exams, 45 questions each, with the proper distribution of exam topic areas. You'll know exactly which questions you got right or wrong and what the correct solutions were. Now, there are a limited number of spots available so be sure to take advantage of the limited time offer because as you know practice makes perfect and that's a wrap thank you guys so much for watching as always be sure to like the video be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and of course i will see you on the next one thank you for watching yeah.